All here at AT&T Park, the home of the Giants. And it is quite a night. And there is some activity out there. A couple of kayaks. And uh, looks like some East Bay fans have availed themselves of the opportunity to uh, travel by water from across the bay here to San Francisco for this all-Bay Area matchup. Randy Johnson, a native of the East Bay, went to Livermore High School before moving on to University of Southern California. And he might have pitched for the A's. He talked to the A's as well as the Giants in the offseason, but ultimately uh, liked what he was hearing from the Giants a little bit more. And, and so here he is now, uh, a 300-game winner, pitching in the Bay Area for the first time as a 300-game winner. And here's our Comcast On Demand replay. Randy Johnson pitching in Washington, D.C., June the 4th to win his 300th career victory. His son Tanner was there. Randy injured himself on this play. He got his man, but hit his elbow and then jammed his shoulder. Went six innings. His son Tanner in the foreground. He was the back boy. And then Randy embracing his uh, his family. They were all there to share it together. Randy and his uh, wife Lisa and their four children. And so now he's back home looking for that 300 first victory. His last start, he went on three days of rest, which he volunteered for uh, when the Giants finished up their series in Florida. Gave up three runs in that ball game, and the Giants were shut out for nothing. So he took a loss in that one, in that one. But Ray, as you said, 24th pitcher all time to win 300 games, the sixth lefty. So he's in a very short list of left-handers who've ever won 300 games with Carlton, Glavin, Lefty Grove, Eddie Plank, and the winningest left-hander of all time, Warren Spahn. He was the fourth to hit the milestone while wearing a Giants uniform, but the first in nearly a hundred years. The last to do it in a Giants uniform was the, the great Hall of Famer Christy Mathewson in 1912. Of course, John, as he was going for number 300, a lot of people were thinking that maybe he would get a chance to do it against the Oakland A's here tonight had he not won in Washington or in Florida. But uh, I think in any time you're trying to get to that milestone, get it over with as quickly as possible. And I think the most amazing thing is how many games he has won age 40 and beyond. Yeah. That's the incredible thing, well, that, and his, uh, his ability to pitch as long as he has. That puts him in a list uh, really with only Warren Spahn. By the way, one of those names on that list of 300-game winners, Lefty Grove of the Athletics. Mm -hmm. The uh, Oakland A's, the formerly Kansas City A's, and originally the Philadelphia A's. As Randy Johnson and the Giants take the field, get the best HD experience only from Comcast. Comcast gives you the most HD. Beautiful night here in San Francisco. Beautiful pregame ceremonies honoring the 1989 Giants. And let's take a look now at the Oakland batting order brought to you by Verizon Wireless, America's largest mobile-to-mobile -mobile calling family. It'll be Orlando Cabrera. And he's had the best success of all the current Oakland hitters in the past against the big unit, a 300 lifetime average against him. He's the shortstop. Adam Kennedy, who's had a hot bat since uh, being brought into Oakland. Jack Cuss, the powerful left-handed hitting right fielder. Matt Holliday, the former Colorado Rocky. He's in left field hitting cleanup. Kurt Suzuki, the outstanding young Oakland catcher, bats fifth. Bobby Crosby, who for a long time was a shortstop. Now he's sort of a jack-of-all-trades. He's at first base tonight. The former giant, Rajay Davis, a, a speedster. He's in center field. Jack Hanahan, the third baseman. And Josh Outman, the young left-hander who is four and 4-0. Oh, and he's up against the big unit here tonight. All right, what do you say we take a look at our Giants defense tonight? Brought Wait a to you minute. By your California. Yes. Is that Mike Kruko? I, I made it. <laughs> I'm out of breath, but I made it. <laughs> hey, nice ceremonies. That was beautiful. Yeah. You got a big ovation. The, the, uh, the Everybody seemed to have a great time down there. Yeah, a lot of fun. A lot of did laughs. You, did you have oxygen from Craig Lufford's? That's your outfield for the Giants tonight. Uribe, Renteri on the left side of the infield. Burris and Sandoval be on the right side. Benji Molina, well, he'll be in the squad doing the catching and putting the fingers down for the big unit, Randy Johnson. Johnson in his 13th start, 5-5 five five on the year, 5.14 ERA, 61 strikeouts against 24 walks. And his key tonight is simple. If he has the slant on his slider, if he's able to hit the inside corner of the right-handed batters with the fastball, he'll have a good night. And the first pitch at 10 minutes after 7. A foul back to the screen. 66 degrees, the official game time temperature with just a, a light breeze blowing out towards San Francisco Bay. One strike to Cabrera. 
and way off the outside with the uh, but Randy uses as a changeup his uh, split finger fastball to count one ball and one strike Adam Kennedy and Jack Cust a couple of lefties will be following the right handed hitter Cabrera used to be most left handed hitters would come up with an aching back or you know a bad knee or a sprained ankle or whatever the night that the big unit was pitching that fastball is popped up off the first base side Sandoval and Burris go over but it is in amongst the spectators and the count one ball and two strikes or John Kruk and he bats right handed with no chance in the all star game to face him I will never forget oh, that, isn't that amazing? funniest thing I ever saw <laughs> Larry Walker Larry Walker yeah. just would not play Rafael Palmero yeah. in the American League but well, Johnson itis I'm sure has occurred quite a few years when Randy just kind of like Nolan Ryan itis when uh, big Nolan was pitching right handers hated to face him one and two the count and the slider is in the dirt two balls and two strikes one more game in this series that'll be tomorrow at uh, 105 baseball in the sunshine with Matt Kane for the Giants against another young Oakland uh, pitcher who has been excellent Brett Anderson 105 tomorrow there's that slider and he struck him out swinging the signature Johnson pitch and there is one away well this has been the pitch that of his over 4800 strikeouts I'd have to say about 3,000 of them have yeah. been on Mr. Snappy. I mean, you have a pitch that has a name, and he calls this slider Mr. Snappy. You've accomplished something in this game. Well, I remember when he faced, uh, actually pitched for the Mariners, he could not do that. He could not get the ball inside. David Valley, who caught him for many years with Seattle, had to sit almost behind the hitter to get him to throw inside. And there's a called strike on the outside to the left-handed hitting Adam Kennedy. Kennedy, for many years with the Angels in the American League, and uh, he won a World Series ring against the Giants in the 2002 World Series. And this is Burris at second. Out number two. So two down. All right, let's take a look at our round table key ingredients. And there are points of interest we'll look at tonight. First of all, Altman's changeup control. That seems to be a key for him. If he's get that changeup over, it will set up other pitches. For Randy Johnson, we talked about the slant on Mr. Snappy. That is always a key. And for both teams tonight, always a... Big, big ingredient to success, and that's clean defense. Two down, nobody on. Here is Jack Cust. And a fastball for a called strike. Now, Cust may be Fenway Park. You've got the the triangle out there that's 420. Maybe it would have stayed in the yard at Fenway, but I don't think anywhere else besides here. That's about it. It's amazing how many Jack has hit to the warning track or the wall. Matter of fact, John, he went back and looked at some video. He has counted 13 balls that have either gone to the warning track or against the wall at the Coliseum that have stayed in the park. And, of course, the heavy air has kept it in the park, but he could have had a lot more home runs than what he already has. Well, he should have hit that one last <laughs> night at the Coliseum. Exactly. Then it wouldn't have gone to the warning track. <laughs> oh, and to the count. The slider, and he took it for the ball. One ball and two strikes. And one thing that seemed real noteworthy last night, and you see him all the time, he hit that pitch against Lincecum off the right center field wall on the first pitch. Yeah. He doesn't swing at the first pitch often, does he? He is then doing a lot more gym scale, and the A's new hitting coach has been working with him to be more aggressive. Yeah, yeah what was that about? We were sitting here last night going, oh, let's get a strike on right. Cust. I mean, the guy never swings yeah. at the first pitch. Whack. Well, he went for a long time without him walking, which is very unusual. He's going to still strike out, but he's expanded his strike zone. Kind of like Gene Tennis, uh, John. Remember him with the sure, athletics yeah. and... Uh, he was very good at taking pitches. Left field hit well, but there is Torres, and that is the inning. Three up and three down. A 12-pitch first inning for Randy Johnson. Now the Giants coming up.
or as A's fans may prefer it, the Oakland San Francisco Bay Bridge. <laughs> Be that as it may, tonight it leads to AT&T Park in San Francisco. The Giants batting order now Aaron Rowan in center field and Edgar Renteria shortstop Randy Wynn in right Benji Molina hits cleanup Pablo As uh, uh, Sandoval who has been very hot at home Ron Uribe at third Torres in left Burris the second baseman Randy Johnson the pitcher batting ninth all up against the 24 year old left hander Josh Outman and this will be the Giants first time to see Outman who got the old timey baseball look there that's right off the foot of Aaron Rowan so that's a foul ball although fielded by Hanahan in fair territory, strike one. And Josh Altman came over from the Phillies organization last year. Joe Blanton, of course, number 55, going to the Phillies, became a world champion. So Josh Altman making his 11th start, beginning of the season. There was some time where, with the rainouts and unfortunate death of Nick Aiden Hart, they had to they actually skip him. So he was in the bullpen for a couple of appearances, but he has pitched outstanding for the Athletics, especially in the rotation. You can see those numbers, uh, fewer hits than innings pitched by far. So obviously he's been tough to hit. 0-2 the count to Aaron Rowan, who comes into the game hitting 310 for the year, and he's been on fire ever since becoming the Giants' leadoff man. Which now, he a little said, over three weeks ago. He said one of the big keys that got him going was he didn't go up there trying to hit home runs. He says, you know what, I'm just going to try and hit singles, and whatever happens, happens. And that has been the key to success. He's taken some swing out. He's got a little more bat head control. And boy, the results have been dramatic. Rowan hitting 369 in the last 32 games. And since becoming the leadoff man, he's hitting 400, 40 for 100. I didn't even have to see that printed out. I didn't have to get my calculator out. I did all that calculating in my head. One and two the count. And the high hard one on the inside for the strikeout. The Athletics defensively, Matt Holliday, Rajay Davis, and also Jack Custer in the outfield. Hanahan, Cabrera, Kennedy, and Crosby. Bobby Crosby getting the start at first is a late scratch for Jason Giabu with a calf injury. Kurt Suzuki fouled the ball off his left knee Thursday afternoon. Had a miss last night, but he is back in the lineup tonight. He is an Iron Man. He loves to play, and it's going to take a lot to keep him out. Outstanding young catcher in the American League, Kurt Suzuki. Here's Edgar Renteria, and that's ball one. Now, Renteria is the only giant to have ever faced Outman in the past. Uh, last year when Outman came up briefly at the end of the year for the Athletics, they had a game against Detroit in which he pitched, and uh, Renteria went two for two with a double and a triple against him. And he's got a base hit right here. And that is the first hit, the first base runner of the game. And Edgar needed a hit. He'd, he'd been struggling lately. Well, it Good hits, good swings all start with good pitches to hit, and that's T ball location right over the plate, above the belt. And uh, when you get up there, you first at bat, you get a gift like that, you're thinking, hey, this could be a pretty good night. That's how you're supposed to hit that pitch. And unfortunately, mislocation is supposed to be inside, and we see it so often where lefty tries to go inside, he misses the ball, leaks out over the plate, it becomes a very hittable pitch. Here now is Randy Wynn. Giants right fielder, switch hitter, batting right handed, and at the knees for a called strike did from you think Outman. That, sorry, John, I was going to ask Ray a question about, you know, having caught all those years. Did you ever notice that it took a, a, a lefty or a little bit longer to establish that yeah. side of the plate, that inside corner to righties? You almost but, have to get as far, maybe off the plate, not in the strike zone, off the plate, forcing with the angle to get the ball on the inside, maybe off the plate. Like that. And off the plate for ball one. One ball. And one strike, the low-lying sun reflecting high off the hitter's backdrop in center field, and sometimes not reflecting at all. But if uh, if there aren't any clouds in the way of the the low-lying sun, it is very difficult this time of the evening to pick up the ball. Check swing on that changeup and a foul on the count to win. One ball and two strikes. You know, just to finish that point about throwing the fastball and establishing that, it, it learned it from. Roger Craig and Norm Sherry, they both professed when you got out there and started warming up to go into a game, that was the first pitch that you would start and establish. For a right-hander, you would establish that inside pitch to the lefty because you're getting a little more stretched out mm -hmm. and reaching across the plate. You plant that strike and get consistency, consistency with that, then you basically establish your fastball. And if you're a lefty, then the lefty is, is throwing it to the inside part of the plate to a righty. And it's easy to throw for a right-handed pitcher to the inside corner to a righty. 
and vice versa for a lefty into a, into a lefty. But I mean, that, that, that's essential to, to establish that side of the plate, the one that's farthest away from you. And Wynn is down on strikes. That's Two down. And a good changeup from Josh Altman, and, and that's a pitch that, in addition to the fastball inside, then going to the changeup away from the right-handers. It's been an outstanding pitch for him, and something that Ron Romanek and, and Kurt Young, bullpen and, and pitching coach, have been working with him to try to get him to establish the changeup because he throws hard, good pitches, but the changeup has been an outstanding pitch for him. Good point. <laughs> Yo, catcher, you? You're sitting up higher than me. I'm going to move my chair up so we can be equal. Yeah, let me let me move mine up just a little bit more too. Sorry, I, think, Ray, I got the high chair. I think that was good though that you're, you know, sitting down like that. That's where catchers are, That's right? True. That's true. Catchers get down, get yeah. down behind the batter. And I could imagine catching this guy. Yeah, that would have been fun. That been, I wouldn't <laughs> like that. I wouldn't like that a lot. That's right. That would have been fun. <laughs> I was talking to Burt Blylevin about the same thing. I had to try to hit his curveball. It'd have been great to try to catch it. Here's Benji Molina, the Giants' cleanup hitter, two down runner at first, and Outman is. Off the outside corner with ball two. Two balls and no strikes. No John, score in the game here in the first. You think back, John, when you broadcast with the A's in 1974 and a great catfish hunter and Raleigh Fingers and Kenny Holtzman, Vital Blue, how many times did they throw inside? It was mostly pitching away, 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 occasionally going inside. It's changed considerably. Now Benji in the air, left center field, hit pretty well. Way back there, that ball is gone. A home run for Benji Molina. 2-0 Giants, and it's been a while for Benji. His first home run here at home in a long, long time. Now Benji Molina likes that ball out middle half away where he can get extended. If you can put it down, the, the knees are a little bit lower, all the better. This is right in his happy zone. And right now you've got a little carry that... In this ballpark with the prevailing winds, you know it'll get a little drift out towards the gaps towards straight, straight center, and that ball's definitely affected by the wind. 2 nothing Giants, and here is Sandoval, the curveball. Here's Hanahan, and that is the final out. A two-run homer with two down off the bat of Benji Molina. Randy Johnson back to the hill to face Holiday. Night at AT&T Park. That means the first 20,000 fans will receive a Giants knit cap, courtesy of Johnsonville. This is a special night at AT&T Park for just 10 bucks. You can enjoy the Giants as they honor Randy Johnson's 300th victory during a pregame ceremony that will include other 300 game winners: Gaylord Perry, Tom Seaver, Nolan Ryan. And you can take advantage of this $10 ticket offer. Go to sfgiants.com. Thank you, Mike Kruko, along with Mike and Ray Fossey. This is John Miller bringing you the Giants and the Athletics interleague play from San Francisco. The Giants out front 2 nothing, as Matt Holliday takes a called strike from Randy Johnson. Holliday had a 
pretty good night last night against Tim Litzigan. There's that change up, and the count is 0 and 2 to Holiday. Holiday had a couple of singles and a walk, but in the eighth inning, he became the seventh strikeout victim of Litzigan, who got his uh, second Major League shutout, only his third career Major League complete game. The fastball up and in, one ball. And two strikes. Mike Kruko, 14 years in the big leagues, many of them with the Giants, and also many, many years as a Giants broadcaster, Ray Fossey. 12 years in the big leagues, and 24 years broadcasting A's baseball. So we've got the Bay Area matchup here in the interleague play, and we've got the uh, both sides of the Bay Area covered in the, the broadcast booth as Ray ordinarily on the Comcast Sportsnet California with uh, Glenn Kuyper. And uh, Mike on Comcast uh, Sportsnet Bay Area with Dwayne Kuyper. And on NBC Bay Area with John Miller. And that's where we are tonight. NBC Bay Area. That one right down by the McCovey Loft. And out of play. Two and two the count. My first year as a baseball broadcaster was with Oakland in 1974. I was just hired to broadcast and was at the ballpark, and Ray came pick me up, and we went out and, uh, for a speaking engagement at a, at a banquet <laughs> that night. So I met, Ray was the first member of those athletics that I met. They had already won two straight World Series and won it again that year, and uh, the ball is fouled. And uh, I think one of the greatest teams ever assembled and doesn't really get, I think it's uh, due credit. And people keep talking about other, other ball clubs instead, but the A's did something that no team had ever done up to that time, won six consecutive postseason series. The Yankees had won five straight World Series, but that did not have to have a playoff in any one of those years as Johnson strikes out Matt Holliday. John, I think you know as well as anybody it was because of the owner, Charles O. Fenley, who lived in Chicago and, and uh, of course, owned the athletics, and even though he won, didn't have a lot of people show up, and uh, it was kind of unfortunate. And you, of all people, you show up for one year, win a world championship, and you leave. Well, What's I knew up? they weren't going to do it again, so <laughs> I got, I, although I had some help in leaving in that uh, Charlie fired me and hired somebody else, but uh, that made it all made it that much easier for me to leave. Here is Kurt Suzuki, and the, I really, I should have paid them. I was 22 years old. They were the best team in baseball. And it was like getting my postgraduate degree in, in, in baseball. I, uh, because that team played the game the way it was supposed to be played. Bunt defense, moving runners up, relay plays. They did it all and did it all well. Better than anybody. And maybe as well as it's ever been done in the history of the game. Joe Morgan told me when they faced the A's in 72 in the World Series. He says the only time in his career that he went through a whole series of games. Never saw a starting pitcher make a mistake. Yeah. That's how good those A's were with, with Catfish and Vita Blue and Ken Holtzman. Raleigh fingers out of the bullpen. Oh, and to the count to Suzuki. That's toward the middle. Here is Burris. And a low throw. Sandoval can't handle it. And Burris continues to have some problems going to that side, going to his right. Well, it's very unusual for a ball to go to the end of the dugout because of the rail where all the players lean. But the ball actually hit the warning track and bounced into the dugout. Looks like he had like a little bit of a stumble there. Yeah. Once he finally got up right. Throws a little one hopper over to Sandoval. And uh, I think if you ask Sandoval, he'll probably tell you, I, I should catch this ball. That's a short hop. Yeah. And probably should have caught it without the ball hitting the ground. But just threw him a, a sinker. You're right, Crook. And ball stepped. And Benjamin Molina was there. But it bounced into the dugout before he could get to it. So a two-base error. Suzuki at second. Giants lead 2-0. Here's Bobby Crosby. The fastball on the inside for a called strike. That's his key, planting that inside fastball. I think it also says a lot about Kurt Suzuki. As you mentioned, found the ball off his knee on Thursday, and he could barely walk, yet he was busting it down the line hard and maybe forced Burris to make the quick throw. One strike to Crosby. Left center field hit well. Torres back. And there to make the catch near the 382 marker and then to say hello to his center field teammate Aaron Rowan. Well, right now with Andre Torres and Aaron Rowan and Randy Wynn out there, and essentially you got three guys who played center field at the big league level. You've got pretty good coverage. So you're going to get your gaps covered a little more in, uh, with this alignment than with other alignments. You can see Torres barking the whole way. I think it's a hard thing too. And Kite made this point. When you've been a center fielder and you're used to guys backing off when you do the barking, 
it's hard for a guy making the transition once he goes to the corners to give up that 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 censorship. I mean, when you're the general out there in center field, you have to say so. Here's Rajay Davis to right field. Randy Wynn, plenty of room, and the inning is over. So an error, but the runner is stranded. Randy Johnson, two shutout innings in the books. 2 nothing Giants. Some tears here. The special pregame ceremony honoring the 1989 Giants. Craig Lefferts running in as he got introduced, like he did as a player. And then Dave Drabecki, who was such an inspiration for that 89 squad and continues to be an inspirational figure even now. So, an amazing pregame ceremony. The Giants honoring the 89 team. The A's will honor their 89 squad that won the World Series in a couple of weeks. John, Mike, and Ray, back up to you. All right, and that's Raj Mathai. The sports director at NBC Bay Area here with us tonight as Juan Uribe leads off for the Giants against the rookie Josh Outman. 2-0. The Giants are on top. And ball one to Uribe. One of the, the great moments, I thought, and uh, very poignant in the ceremonies before the game in which the 1989 Giants who won the National League pennant were honored. Uh, and just about everybody seemed like they were here, but one... Uh, Big absence, and uh, the, the man who played shortstop with the Giants, Jose Uribe, the cousin of Juan Uribe. Well, he was remembered, and then his wife and daughter, escorted by Juan Uribe, came out onto the field before the game. And this is the moment we're talking about. We didn't have any idea that they were going to do this, and uh, you know, Jose Uribe was one of those very special people that touched everybody's life in a very soft way. He was a gentleman. And when they brought his wife and his daughter out and, and Juan Uribe had the, the uniform. We had, we locked up out there. It was an emotional moment. Well, I think a lot of other people did as well. Robbie Thompson, who was the the keystone partner, the double play combination partner with Uribe. And uh, I can't say about the American League, but in the National League, nobody turned the double play better at that time than the combination of Uribe and Robbie Thompson. And pitchers love that for sure. The double play. <laughs> it, it, if there was, a, if you had a, a runner first, if you had a, a ball hit on the ground, you wouldn't even look. You just assumed it was going to get done. Well, Rebay with a pop fly, shallow center. That's Cabrera. He's called off by Rajay Davis, who takes it, and that is out number one. One down in the Giants' second, and uh, Andres Torres will come up. So who looked the best out of all those old Giants from 1989? Scott Carell. He's, he's looking. At, we're looking at him here. No. No, not Besides so. Besides him. Scott Carell's <laughs> looked like he'd go out and throw two innings right now. He looked fantastic. And uh, he's uh, raising thoroughbred horses now mm -hmm. down in Louisiana. And, and uh, it's just great to catch up with all these guys, you know, find out what they're doing. And, and these guys have all had nice lives. There's Scott Carell's. Looks fantastic. Got his boots on? Oh, yeah. He's, uh, he sleeps in those boots. Come on. How does Scott? <laughs> and there's uh, a cold strike to Andres Torres. Torres. Is hitting 231 in 26 at bats, one home run, six batted in. The Giants lead 2 0. Last of the second, facing young Josh Outman, 24 year old lefty. 
And that's a swing, says first base umpire D.J. Rayburn on the appeal. And the count is 0-2. Do you know who else could? I mean, middle, inf- middle infielders always seem to look the best. I mean, it's shortstops and second basemen always seem to come back, and they look like they go out and still take ground balls. And you can say that about Robbie Thompson. He looks fantastic. Change up in the dirt. One ball, two strikes. Probably no greater story, though, than Dave Dravecki, I would think. And, of course, you being with him and everything that went on. Well, you know, they asked me the question last night, what was the most memorable thing in 1989? It, it was an obvious for me. It was when Dave Dravecki came back in August, August 11th. It was the dog days of August. That's up the middle. That is a base hit for Andres Torres. Kind of muscled it off the fists and right through the middle for the Giants' third hit of the game. And uh, you, you know how a, a team will get a little stale, you get a little tired in August, and the dog days can wear on you. And he was our shot in the arm. He really energized our club, and it was a, a, a miracle. We really thought, having seen him in spring training, and, and, the, and the surgery that he had on his shoulder literally looked like a shark bite. Mm-hmm. And there's no way he's ever going to pitch again. And then for him to pitch again and then win again, it was amazing. One of the, uh, the great moments in Giants history at Candlestick Park. Mm-hmm. One out with Torres at first. He is a, a threat to steal. He's got excellent speed. Burris is the hitter with the pitcher, Randy Johnson, on deck. And that fastball off the inside. One ball and, and no strikes. How about Craig Lefferts? He got introduced, and he sprinted in like he was coming in to ride to the rescue from the bullpen. And he denied he was going to do it because we were all teasing him. you got to run in. He says, I haven't run in 20 years. I may blow out two hamstrings and a quad. Just... <laughs> 10 yards out of the gate. Okay, well, well, that one theory was tested. How many did he blow out? <laughs> he looks great. <laughs> I was looking for oxygen. I, I thought I thought he needed it. This is hurting right now. He's thinking, this is a dumb idea. <laughs> but the fans are cheering him on. That was the, the impressive thing. They remembered. I know he felt like a streaker in the response from the crowd. <laughs> Diving back is Torres at first with Bobby Crosby on the bag with him. Roberto Kelly, the first base coach, whispering into his ear. 2-0, the count to Emmanuel Burris. Fans were great, man. It was a blank of love. It was a wonderful feeling to stand out there and receive it. Hanahan gets the lead runner. Nicely done by Hanahan with the second baseman Kennedy covering. And Burris, safe at first. Burris chased a bad ball there on a 2-0 count. Comcast Sportsnet has complete Giants coverage on Sportsnet Central every night at 10.30. Comcast, Sportsnet, authentic Bay Area sports. I imagine they must cover the A's as well, if it's the whole Bay Area. We seem to mention that they cover the Giants the most, though. Of course. Here's Randy Johnson. Two down, runner at first, and there's ball one. Now, can Randy get any more padding on his left elbow? I think if he could, he he would. (laughs) That looks like a lawn boy strapped to his arm. (laughs) But why not? Absolutely. The era of the protective pieces. And that's his moneymaker, the left arm. 2-0 the count. You know, last night when Ben Mazzaro, of course, was perfect for, what, three and two-thirds innings, he went through eight hitters, but when he got to Lincecum, someone was like, I don't want to throw a ball. And he started guiding the ball, ended up going three and two before he struck him out. But for the American League pitchers facing hitters who are the pitchers, it's almost like they don't want to walk them, so they're kind of guiding the ball too much. So... It's not just doing what you normally exactly. do. You, he starts thinking about it. Like, now this is, i got to make sure I just throw him strikes. I can't walk this guy. I can't walk this guy. I can't walk. I just walk this yeah. guy. <laughs> <laughs> so it's 2-2 two and two now to Randy Johnson. Now, on the other, or rather, yeah, 2-2 two and two is the count. On the other hand, with the bases loaded, he got to a, a hitter's count to Tim Linscombe, right. and he grooved one in there, and Linscombe did not miss it. He knocked in the first run of the game. This is back to Outman. Plenty of time. And the inning is over. One hit for the Giants. One man stranded. On to the third inning. Randy Johnson will go back to the hill leading 2-0.
1989 replica jersey. Tuesday night will be the reunion of the 1989 championship A's, including Tony Phillips, Dave Stewart, Dave Henderson, and more. And the series wraps up Wednesday, the 24th. Game time each night is 7.05 for tickets. Visit OaklandAthletics.com. They're having fun. And A's fans and wow. Giants fans, uh, and uh, they built uh, their own little couch potato island out of McCovey Cove. <laughs> I like that. <laughs> I like that. I mean, you know, the Coe's been kind of quiet this year, so this is this is nice to see. I'm John Miller with Ray Fossey, broadcaster for the Oakland Athletics, and Mike Kruko, the Giants and the A's playing ball, interleague play, and there's ball one. This this is sort of the, the yearly interleague festival all around baseball, but the only real intramural type matchups this weekend are here in the Bay Area and also in New York. The Mets and Yankees are matching up, and the Giants and the Athletics here on the uh, the West Coast. The Mets beat the Yankees today. Should have beaten them last yeah. night. Man, that was one of the worst finishes to a game if you're a Mets fan. Maybe the, maybe the worst finish to a game I've ever seen in you terms of you ever seen one in that the way one? that one turned well, out. Well, no. I mean, I've seen it in on an air. Right. But I've never seen a guy make an air and then throw the wrong base. <laughs> Exactly. Or a runner at first busted the way to share did to score all the way from first to the game winner. You know what? I think he earned his contract with that yes, one did. bust. Yes, yeah. he did. It was just a pop-up. Looked yeah. like the game was over, and he ran hard. He slid in at the plate, and then he got up, and he said to Derek Jeter, what happened? <laughs> That's right. <laughs> he, kept waiting, many, he kept waiting for the third base coach <laughs> to tell him, oh, you don't have to run. That one's into the gap in right center field, out into Death Valley. And he's going to run for a while. Rowan retrieves it. The second is Hanahan. Digging for third. The relay by Burris. And offline. A triple for Hanahan. Jack Hanahan running hard with his second triple of the year. I guess when you hit a ball to Death Valley, as you call it, you have to go for a triple regardless. Mike Gallego didn't do anything at third. Figured you better get here. Last night was not the case. As... Adam Kennedy was thrown out with a perfect relay. This time, Jack Hanahan. And this is not easy, folks. From home to third. He's looking, not even looking at Mike Gallego. Figured he better get to third, and he does. With a throw a little bit offline. Unlike last night, where Burris made a perfect throw to the plate. And that was probably the key man, uh, moment in the ballgame, actually. I agree. That was the biggest play of the game. So now here is Josh Outman. Runner at third. Nobody out. Outman hits it right back to Randy Johnson. He looks Hanahan back. And that's all for Outman. Not, not a bad job there by Outman, though, considering that that's not something he ordinarily does. The good news, Hanahan got a triple. The bad news, Hanahan got a triple. Because that meant Outman had to swing the bat. And unfortunately, went right back to Randy Johnson. But did you notice the difference in the two running? Johnson, who grounded out <laughs> in the bottom of the inning, and Outman in this inning. Outman was sprinting. Johnson just kind of took his time, which is what you should do as a pitcher. I'm sure back in 1988... When Johnson was the same age as, Han as uh, Outman is right now, that's exactly the way he ran out of comeback. There's a 24-year-old version and a 45-year-old version. <laughs> Here is a called strike to Orlando Cabrera. And the Giants have brought the infield in, at least in halfway here, with Cabrera up and a runner at third. But that gets back to that play last night in New York with Teixeira at first base, two outs, runner first and second. He's the back runner. Who runs hard like that? Exactly. I mean, that's yeah. fantastic that he did it. Said a lot about him, I thought. That change up is off the outside. One ball and one strike. And Castillo caught the ball in shallow, shallow right, or should have caught the ball to end the game. Dropped it, scrambled after it, and with the tying run having scored, the winning run heading home, he threw the ball to second base. Yeah, that's crazy. Cut off man. But the way Alex Rodriguez slammed his bat down, he might have had a better chance throwing Alex out at first. Well, that, because Alex probably was yes. not running. He was not running. Yeah. He was he was cursing and yeah. shouting and upset with himself. That's a great line to share what happened. Because that, that had to be strange, but all he was doing was running. And that's what you're supposed to do. Run until they tell you to stop. He had no idea yeah. why he was still running. He just kept running. This one is back to Randy Johnson. Again, he looks Hanahan back. Out number two. Cabrera is now 0 for 2 in the game. Nice pitching. Tune into the Bay Area's number one. Rated 11 p.m. newscast right here on NBC Bay Area tonight at 11. And wake up with traffic and weather on NBC Bay Area weekday morning starting at 4.30 a.m. And I, I can't speak for you, Ray, but Mike and I will certainly be up to catch that bright and early Monday morning. Bright and early always, Monday morning. As always.
Hey, Randy Johnson's got a nice split finger fastball, yeah. probably the best one we've seen him have here the last several starts. And this is an outstanding pitch for one reason. Has a little movement, gets him off balance, he's reaching and gets to the end of the bat with a comebacker. I mean, if that ball gets by Randy Johnson, it's an easy score for Hanahan. He's going on contact. Two down is Adam Kennedy. And the slider in there for a cost right now. Ray, this guy was a, a jolt of adrenaline to this yeah. Oakland lineup. Well, fortunately for the A's, he had a contract with the Tampa Bay Rays in AAA that if he got a chance to get to the big leagues, then the Rays would let him go. And unfortunately, Mark Ellis, one of the disabled list, but incidentally, right after Adam Kennedy, within about a week or two, Akinori Iwamura went on the disabled list. And that is a base hit. More of the same from Kennedy. The A's are getting used to that kind of thing. In to score is Hanahan, the two-out RBI single in the clutch for Kennedy. And it is two to one, Giants. And Mike, perhaps you could explain as a pitcher, you get two outs. How hard is it to get that third out? In this case, Randy Johnson, two outs, and then gives up a base hit. Well, you're starting to sniff the barn, and you're definitely yeah. trying to bear down. And when you make a location mistake like this, it's out of a plate and up to a hot hitter. You know, you know you're going to pay the price. And he's very upset yeah. with that location. But it, and you know that hurts a pitcher because he's one pitch away from getting out of an inning, and bang! Now all of a sudden. The inning continues, and you know you don't know where it's going to go. But he's definitely frustrated because of that bad location pitch. And it was interesting as Johnson almost threw that pickoff throw away to hear a former big league catcher ask the former big league pitcher that question. Because as a catcher, you're always trying to get in the minds of, a, of exactly. your pitchers, right? You exactly. want to know if, if he's upset there. If maybe yeah. you need to go out and talk with him or you know, settle him down a little bit. So Ray is still trying to do that. And Crook's a little upset right now. Maybe, he's, maybe you need to go out and talk to him. Yeah, but Ray, you didn't have to throw the water on me. But, but the, the one thing, though, that is not done enough is a catcher going out and discussing with the pitcher. I, I think it's kind of a lost art. And, you know, when you make a play and you have to run to first base, you're exerting a lot of energy as a pitcher. That's when a catcher needs to go out coming down a little bit because he's getting ready to make another crucial pitch. This one hit very softly. Burris, and he got it. Cust, not a whole lot of speed. Might have been closer if he just had a little more speed. One run, two to one, Giants. of the A's from San Francisco and here come the Giants into the last of the third leading two to one Josh Outman to Aaron Rowan and the curveball is in the dirt for ball one Rowan struck out his first time he'll be followed by Edgar Renteria and then Randy Wynn the Giants got two in the first on a Molina home run Oakland answered back with a triple by Hanahan and a two out single by Kennedy and that's our score two to one toward the middle not hit hard and Cabrera throws out Rowan. There is one away. Now let's go down to NBC Bay Area Sports Director. Here's Raj Mathai. 
Thank you, John. It's been a wild ride for Randy Johnson in the last 10 days. He got his 300th career win in Washington. And then just a few days ago when the Giants were in Arizona on their road trip, got a nice ovation in Arizona from the Diamondbacks fans. And remember, four Cy Young Awards and the World Series co-MVP with the Diamondbacks. So Randy Johnson, still a big thing in Arizona. Guys, back up to you. Indeed, four straight Cy Young wins while there. He was there for the final out when they won the the World Series in 2001. And he and Kurt Schilling were about as good as you'll ever see as a one-two punch in anybody's rotation. It seemed like Bob Bradley was the manager at that time was trying to make sure that nobody but those two pitches even in a single inning in that World Series. And I think he almost pulled it off. Schilling made three starts. Johnson made two starts. And then Johnson was the closer in Game 7, a night after he'd won Game 6. 3-0 the count to Renteria. That is great. And uh, right before the All-Star break in 2001, the A's went into Phoenix, played the Diamondbacks, and it was the big three, Hudson, Mulder, and Zito, and gave up absolutely nothing in three games. Kurt Schilling said to Mark Mulder in the offseason, I'm glad we didn't have to face you guys in the World Series. <laughs> and that's how great those three pitched. And the Diamondbacks knew it. Yeah, well, the Giants were in a pennant race with the D-backs that year, and the Giants were cheering on the, the big three for the A's that weekend, that's for sure. Three and two now to Renteria, who singled his first time to start that two-run first-inning rally. And Outman is still not retired. Renteria has faced him three times. And Edgar has a single, which he got tonight, a double and a triple. And a pop-up foul. Crosby and Suzuki come over. It is Crosby. Nice catch. Wow. The wind tends to come in over the roof of the ballpark there and blow a ball back toward the field like that. And uh, Crosby stayed with it, and I don't know how he caught it. Uh, Bobby Crosby, a shortstop his whole life until this spring when the A's got Cabrera. So he's been playing third, second, and first, and that was a tremendous play. To first of all, get to the rail. That's the key. And then to be able to reach over with his teammates there to help him. Wow. But you're right, John. The win, it does bring it back all the time, whether you're a catcher, first, or third baseman, and you have to play it accordingly. Yeah. I'll guarantee that stung his hand, too. <laughs> so two down. Here's Randy Wynn. And the changeup. It's 0 1. Wynn struck out his first time, and Randy just had not been able to find himself as a right handed hitter. 276 overall, but. Right-handed, he has six hits and 51 at bats, and a fastball to the outside corner. It's 0-2. Well, if you turn around the bat left-handed, he wouldn't have any more success because Josh Altman has been lights out against lefties all season. Yeah, his numbers are scary. And the changeup strikes him out. He struck out win twice. Three up and three down. It's two to one Giants onto the fourth. Matt Holiday coming up. Presents who's hot. You might say Tim Linscombe is hot. A shutout last night here against Oakland. Seven hitter. 
Eight strikeouts, one walk. His third career complete game in his second career shutout. And uh, for Litzkin, his second consecutive win in which the Giants did not score very many runs in his behalf. And yet it was more than enough to uh, to win the ball game. So Litzkin, who is now 6-1, and one, along with Matt Cain, who is 8-1. That's 12 out of 13 first pitch yeah. strikes for Randy Johnson. The only time he did get a first pitch strike was in the at that to Hanahan, who had the triple. And now it's 0 2 to Matt Holliday, who struck out his first time. Holliday, 2 for 15 lifetime against the big unit with five strikeouts now. Kurt Suzuki and uh, Bobby Crosby will follow. There's the number you were talking about, uh, Mike. So important. Uh, he success. Success. First pitch strike. Absolutely. Now, it was not always important for Randy Johnson. Not Maybe when he was throwing 99 miles an hour <laughs> so much. Yeah. You're right. He had stuff that could overcome mistakes. That's how good he was. The slider. Ooh, off the foot. And the count remains 0-2 to Matt Holliday. And that's, I think, one of the things that Randy Johnson is, is proud of. that Because when he threw real hard, he also put it together, learned how to pitch. That's when he became a great pitcher. And he says it wasn't that difficult to transition to having more of an average, he, he, he feels that 91, 92, 93 is just an average fastball. Uh, but to be more to sort of in the group, because he knows how to how to pitch. That splitter towards short. This is a long throw for Uribe. He's out. Just got it. And Holiday didn't think so. Now Bill Wolke looked like he had to decide what he was going to do. It wasn't an immediate call in the first base umpire. But Holiday, for a big guy, can get down the line. That, nice. is, that is not Bill Walkie. Walkie's a home plate umpire, but that's how close it was. It's nice to have a bunch of old shortstops out there. <laughs> Let me think about it. Retoria, of course, a shortstop. Yes. Burris was a shortstop. Uribe, a shortstop. And what all shortstops seem to have great arms. Uribe, who many years in the American League, a shortstop. And uh, won a World Series ring as the starting shortstop for the Chicago White Sox just four years ago. Ball one to Kurt Suzuki. He was safe in an error by Emmanuel Burris his first time. Two to one, the Giants are leading. And that is over the outside corner for a strike. This, by the way, only the second time tonight that he did not get a first pitch strike. But followed it up very quickly to make it one ball, one strike. Way off the outside. And it is two and one. The biggest cheers before the game, I thought. Rightly so, though there were a lot of great cheers for a lot of guys. But uh, the last two who were introduced from that 89 team, Kevin Mitchell, who won the MVP that year in the National League, and then Will Clark. Will the thrill. Will who hit, uh, what, he hit about 1,500, I thought, in the <laughs> National League Championship Series against the Cubs. You know, you walk around town with Will Clark, it's a treat. I mean, he is so recognizable. I mean, you can't walk... 10 yards without somebody saying, hey, the thrill. Hey, Will. Hey, give us a nooster face. Hey, Will. Hey. <laughs> and he just goes right with it. He loves it. That slider belted. Deep left center field. Torres going back, and that ball is gone. Kurt Suzuki with a home run to tie the game. Only the third home run of the year for Suzuki. But that was a streak of lightning out toward that 382 marker in left center. Well, his last came on May the 4th. That was against the Angels, and Joe Saunders, another lefty. Matter of fact, his three home runs have all come against left handers. CC Sabathia, Joe Saunders, and now the big unit, Randy Johnson. A slider down and in. Same pitch he hit against CC Sabathia in New York. A three run home run. And this a big one, tied it in. That's why he wants to play. Could have very easily said, ah, oh, the knee still bothers me. I better not play. Give me another night off. He loves to play, and he's done a great job. Bobby Crosby with a swinging strike. Crosby flied out deep to left center his first time. And that splitter swung out of missed, and it's strike two. Splitter's been a good pitch for him. Well, that swing of Suzuki's is very, very quick. And a ball and two strikes with Rajay Davis on deck. Two strikes protecting, just dropped the head of the bat right there. 
slider, a pitch that Randy brought him to get down and in, maybe back foot to strike him out, swinging over the pitch, but he left it too much of the plate. High pop up. And uh, although Molina went up the line, it is Sandoval who makes the catch. And it wasn't easy. Two down. Well, Sunday, June 21st, it's a 105 start. It's our annual strikeout cancer day presented by Genentech. And 21st is also Father's Day. So if you're looking for four tickets, buy three. And guess what? The old man gets to go free. That's mm -hmm. right. Pops is free. And if you're still looking for that special gift for dad, the first 15,000 fans will receive a Giants necktie courtesy of Genentech. So go online to sfgiants.com. Enter dad as your coupon code and check it out. Now, Roger Davis has great speed. Uribe throws him out, and he showed off that great arm in so doing. That's the inning, but Oakland has tied the game on the Suzuki homer. Benji Molina coming up. Check out pregame live and postgame live before and after every Giants telecast on Comcast Sportsnet, authentic Bay Area sports. Looking at the Oakland Coliseum across the bay, right behind that uh, big tanker out in the Anchor Basin. If there was a game going on over there, we could see the score on that scoreboard there on the right side of the screen. Maybe a replay. <laughs> Molina along the right field line. And there is Cust. And uh, he had a little. Circling around to do as the wind carried it a bit, but Molina, who homered his first time, is gone one away. You know, Jack Cuss is criticized because he's been a DH so much and hit 200 home runs in the minor leagues, but he has done a tremendous job playing right field. And the old saying is, if you drive in more than you let in, you're a good outfielder. But Jack Cuss has turned out he's got a very strong arm, and you get the point that guys try to test him, he'll throw him out. But what he does with the bat really is just magnificent. Well, here is Sandoval. Well, for years, he seemed to be stuck in the minor leagues, and the rap on him was that he, well, he had no position. He struck out too much. Oakland finally is the one ball club that really gave him a, 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 a chance to show what he could do, and he has really done well. As Sandoval hits that one foul off his foot, or his shin, or his ankle, and that, that hurts. But you know, Jack Cust is, you know, this is always tough on a hitter. But it, Ball down and in and get all the protection, Ooh. but it misses. Misses the shin guard. Mm. I don't think I think they should invent, and I've said this, spikes with steel toes. You know the the coal miners have steel toe shoes, the red wings. You think how many times a ball's fouled off a guy's big toes, foot, whatever. Kenji Jojima broke his toe sliding in the home plate at the Coliseum. Actually Kennedy slid into him, he was blocking the plate, Kennedy slid into his his toe and broke it. He's on his same wrist. Out in center field, Rajay Davis, he's there. And Sandoval is now 0 for 2. Two down. Well, Pablo's telling you right there that he's not real happy about getting hit on the toe. 
but I mean, you're an ex catcher. It should be mandatory that catchers should wear steel toed yeah. shoes. But you look how far the shin guard extends over the foot now. They didn't do that before. My whole foot, I got a size 14. That's a lot of exposure there. So, how many toe jams <laughs> did you get, like, on a given year? Dozen? I, I need a lot of tow trucks. I know that. <laughs> because it, it just, they always seem to find you. Didn't matter how much protection, the ball would find you. Well, I don't understand why the umpires don't wear that whole balloon protector like the American League umpires used to. And I think the catchers should wear them, too. <laughs> Those kids, the, the catchers, the umpire, they all get beat up. And that is a called strike from Josh Outman at the knees. One and two, the count. Suzuki, the Oakland catcher. Now, he's got his toes covered. That's right. The extension is perfect, but not hitting. Catching, he does. And that's where the extension of the shin guard up over the knee as well as over the foot. Wow, he hit yeah, that ball twice. If you get hit on the toe, even if you've got those little flat pads hanging over there, that's not going to be a problem. The steel-toed shoes now. Absolutely. Absolutely. Here we go. Plus, if you get into a shit kicking contest, you will be good. <laughs> you see, Ray, this is, I think, something that Mike did way back when. He was a catcher in college. And he said, the hell with this. <laughs> and he became a pitcher instead. <laughs> but you just stayed with catching. I was a shortstop. Like, very, very young. And the, pitcher didn't, or the catcher didn't show up one day and looking for volunteers. And I pitched in high school, too. I had a good curveball. Man. Really? Yeah. But that was it. I'm going to stick with catcher. I've never met a cur uh, catcher that didn't have a good curveball. <laughs> two and two the count and the changeup. Did he swing? Yes, he did. The plate umpire, Welke, made the call himself. Uribe strikes out. And a fourth strikeout for Outman. Two to two on to the fifth. Six two, top of the fifth inning. Randy Johnson to Jack Hanahan, and it is zero and one. Hanahan hit a long triple out of, into the the big gap in right center field here at AT and T Park, leading off the third, and eventually scored Oakland's first run. Two to two in the fifth, and that's back up the middle. And Hanahan, left-handed hitter, is two for two against Randy Johnson. Now let's go down to NBC Bay Area sports director Raj Mathai. Thank you, John. Josh Outman, the A's rookie pitcher, said he was a little nervous coming into this game, not because of the pitching, but the batting facing Randy Johnson. Take a listen. Well, it's not every day you get to square off against a 300-game winner, and it's also not every day you get to have your first uh, major league at bat against them either. So it should, I look forward to it. It's an exciting thing you know, for a young pitcher like myself. Uh, you know, as much as I look forward to getting in the box, I that much don't look forward to getting in against Randy Johnson. Shaking in his shoes. Josh Outman, a real likable young guy. 0 for 1 so far, but maybe he'll pick up his first major league hit right now. Ray, real nice guy, huh? Back up to you. He's a great guy. He's happy, though, that Hanahan got a base hit, so at least try to sacrifice. Hanahan's triple had Outman coming up next. 
Or he had to swing away, and he actually made contact, bounced it right back to Randy Johnson. How about Ben Mazzaro last night? He was Against fantastic. Him lets it come twice, laid out a perfect sacrifice ball. I mean, that was very impressive. Well, and I thought that said a lot about him. Absolutely. And that was just working the last 10 days or so since he got to the big leagues. He obviously took it seriously. Yeah. I thought he, he was pitching so well. And then he gets those butt down on the first pitch mm -hmm. both times. I thought, this is not some... 22 year old rookie. This is John Smoltz. They put in an Oakland uniform here tonight. And that's the way Smoltz and Maddox and those guys used to do it with, with Atlanta. They'd shut you down and then they get that butt down right away. That's a called strike. You have the low strike on the outside and now it's two and two to Outman with Uribe from third and Sandoval from first charging hard. Get the bat head up on top of the strike zone. If it's below the strike zone, those are the ones you want to bunt. Those are the ones that are easy to put on the ground. You don't want to bunt the one that's above your bat. Those are the ones you pop up. And that is strike three. Well, I, I, Bob Garrett really can't get too upset about a, a pitcher that can't get the bunt down. You get one to bat a year. Exactly. They've yeah. been working at it. And, and the one thing, you see the guys, they were down on the Batting cages underneath uh, behind the, the dugout taking batting practice and it was all swings no bunts but they've been working on that as well but their main job Mike as you well know as a pitcher is to get the button down whatever you do is swing the bat is a bonus. Orlando Cabrera uh, the Cabrera the leadoff man takes a called strike on the outside he has struck out and hit a comebacker 0 for 2. Runner still at first with one down here in the fifth inning the Giants 2 Oakland 2 on a beautiful picturesque night here in the San Francisco Oakland Bay Area and uh, the all Bay Area interleague matchup and uh, along the right field line that's fair it's trouble it is a foul ball as Randy Wynn made his best effort and the count is 0 and 2 you know John if you watch Randy Johnson he does a lot of little things that make a lot of sense and if you're a starting pitcher I like what Randy Johnson does with his foot on the mound he gets on the slab, he puts his foot right in the middle of the rubber. And in doing so, if you've got a, a little bit of a problem with your release point, you have the ability to move left or right when you start off in the middle of the rubber. If you start off on one side, like a lot of guys do, jam over to the first base side or third base side, you really don't have but one way you could go to make an adjustment. And I like that. Now, it, it's not so important for a relief pitcher because it's a different deal. The relief pitcher's coming in there, and you know, he's going to be dealing with one inning for most of the time. But for a starting pitcher where you're going to throw 100 pitches, that gives you the ability to make a little adjustment during the game. Of course, it also makes it a little easier when your uh, shoe size is almost the same length as the, the pitching <laughs> slab, right? <laughs> well, you'll see Brett Anderson tomorrow, the A's left-handed starter. He'll be on the third base, far third base side with right-handers. Lefties, he'll move to the middle. So he will actually change depending on the hitter. Eric Gagne did that when he first got to the big leagues. And, uh, he didn't last long doing it. Fastball missing very high and away. Two balls and two strikes. It's just so sensitive, your release point, mm -hmm. of being able to control a fastball at 90 plus miles per hour, and then your other specialty pitches. That when you have a base that you can stay in one spot, it's, it's, it's going to give you a greater consistency. For guys who move on the rubber, you just don't see many guys do it because it's so hard to do it. This did not hit that hard. Burris to rear one, back to first, not in time. Cabrera, too much speed for that to be turned into a double play. It just wouldn't hit very softly. Well, also for Cabrera, he was swinging and running out of the batter's box with a pitch outside, which helped him get down the line quickly. And good job by Jack Hanahan going after the shortstop to at least help him try to get out of the way to make the return throw. They could have called Hanahan yep. out. I don't think he was a distance of the bag to be able to touch it. I agree. You have to be able to reach back with your hand to touch the bag, and that's as far as you can go. So now Cabrera at first and he could steal second base here which might be a good play with Kennedy up and two down. Kennedy knocked in the first Oakland run with a two out single in the third. Here's that play at second you're talking about. Well, let's see where Jack Hanahan how far he slides out towards Renteria. Can he touch the bag? Well, he had his left hand up so I think he might have been able to reach back to the tough second. So that's a legitimate takeout attempt. Oh, I don't know, Ray. What am I going to do with you? <laughs> well, Matt Holiday the other day got hit in the kneecap by uh, kneecap by Liriano. 
and he went into second, and he didn't care anything about touching the bag. He was going to make somebody pay for what he had to take from Luriano. Well, Pablo Sandoval went in hard to second base last night, but he went right, right oh. across the bag. How McRae was the best and the worst, whichever you want to look at it. But if you're a middle infielder, he would hit the bag and almost end up in left field and would just crush a middle infield. Yeah, it's definitely changed around yeah. the bag at second base. It looked like Cabrera had some idea of running that time. He kind of flinched and took a false start, but then did not go anywhere. One ball, one strike to count to Kennedy. The hot hitting Kennedy. And there's the possible go ahead run at first base. Orlando Cabrera. Kennedy's done a great job for the A's with this situation. First and runner at first base, but give big gap between first and second. Hooking the ball. He's got that natural uppercut swing anyway to hook the ball in the right field. And he's found that, that hole many times this year. And slider right to Burris at second. Plenty of time, and the inning is over. One hit and one man left. No runs. Two to two the score as we go to the last of the fifth. Torres coming up. Giants managers Dave Bristol, Frank Robinson, Danny Ozark, and Jim Davenport. They were there from 1980 to 1985. They were 425 and 495. Roger Craig managed the last 18 games of that 85 year. But after that, Roger turned it around with 48 games above 500, won two National League Western titles and a, and a pennant. And that's why we call him the Hum Baby, and that's our Honda inside to the game. Great days for the Giants and, uh, and great days for baseball fans in the Bay Area. At large, as uh, both teams were outstanding in those days, there was pennant race baseball going on on both sides of the bay every day, season after season. As Andres Torres, that's here against the Oakland Athletics in a 2-2 tie facing uh, facing rookie Josh Outman. Torres hit a single his first time. One of three hits the Giants have had against Outman, but only one hit since the first inning. Benji Molina hit a two-run homer against the young Outman. Giants have not scored since. That's a high foul that will go out of play. The Athletics got a run in the third. Kennedy with a two-out RBI single. And then Kurt Suzuki, the Oakland catcher, homered in the fourth against Randy Johnson to tie the game. So that's our score. Two to two, last of the fifth. Two balls and two strikes is the count. And Torres takes ball three off the outside out, but has not walked anybody last night. Vin Mazzaro only walked one. Oakland has a couple of other young prospects who are in the big leagues right now. Trevor Cahill and uh, Brett Anderson. And uh, that is the uh, the future on parade for the Oakland Athletics right here in the big leagues right now. Four rookies in the A's rotation right now. Dallas Braden, the old guy. The 25. <laughs> Rajay Davis in center. And there is one away. John, what's great about that is that of course, everybody knows if you can get a good starting rotation, and especially with the A's right now with four rookies and Dallas Braden just a little bit over a year, you got a chance to have five great pitchers 
for six years. And Mazzaro last night, third major league start. Beat the White Sox, beat the Orioles last night. It was perfect for three and two-thirds innings. Great movement on his fastball. He's got four quality pitches at front door slider that he got rolling. And then the hard slider down and in. Getting sure holds. And you know, he's pitching, like you said, just like he's been here for 10 years. And that's the confidence he has. Plus, he's got four great pitches to make it happen. So you see the top one of the four in terms of everybody's expectations. That's a strike call to the inside to Emmanuel Burris. Count quickly 0-2 to the man. Just go by what the scouts said during spring training when Cahill, Anderson, and Mazzara were there. They thought Mazzara had the best stuff of all three. He was the only one that didn't make it the rotation out of spring training. But he is here to stay. And ball one too low. Out with a 94 mile an hour fastball. One and two. I don't think he could throw the ball straight. I mean, Mazzaro has such tremendous movement. But I think that's one thing he could do to improve his fastball is learn the four seam grip to where he can use a little less movement because it'll definitely mess up hitters. Down the third base side, that's a foul ball. I mean, anything that is predictable, you throw it enough times a big, big hitter, they're going to square it up. And he's got. 93 95 mile an hour sink with big sink. Now, all of a sudden, you throw a four seam in there that's straight. <laughs> well, it messes you up. And at that's that right. speed, you, you, know, you don't have a, a whole lot of time to react to it. And the other thing, too, out of the stretch, a little more consistency with his arm stroke, and that's going to come with, with maturity and strength level. Here is Cabrera at short. And he gets the fast moving Burris out number two. That kid's got a great future. Mm -hmm. Well, hey, the AT&T food drive, that's tomorrow. Giants going to take on the A's game three of this three-game series. The first 5,000 fans to donate non-perishable food or make a $5 donation will receive a drink tumbler. All donations will benefit the San Francisco Food Bank. Food Bank volunteers will be collecting donations at the gates prior to the game. If you can't make it to the ballpark, you can donate non-perishable food at AT&T store on King Street just across the street from the ballpark. You can do this before June 21st. You will also receive a Giants tumbler. Get here, get the tumbler. Yeah, get here, will you? Come on. And get the Giants and the A's in the sunshine as the count is one ball and one strike to Randy Johnson. Matt Cain will try for his ninth win of the year tomorrow. And he'll be up against another one of those uh, young Oakland uh, prospects. Brett Anderson, a left-handed. One and one to the big unit, and th that's ball two. You know, Randy, he told me an interesting story. That, remember, he was in the dugout. For the final out when he won his 300th game, we had those great shots on television. Jim Lynch and uh, Jeff Kuyper with his son Tanner was the bat boy in the foreground, Randy in the background. And that misses, and the count is three and one. Randy told me that the only reason that he was there for those pictures that night, his wife called him in the clubhouse and said, Where are you? He said, Well, I'm in the clubhouse getting my ice, uh, you know, my. They're icing me down and whatnot. He says, well, get out there. You need to be in the dugout. <laughs> if they get the 300th win, he says, you know, I never even thought of that. That's an excellent point. And he rips that one, but there's Rajay Davis <laughs> for the out. That's the reason he was there. His wife called him. He said, you know, I've been doing that hundreds of times. I never even thought about going back out. <laughs> Good idea. <laughs>
tie of the game, and we go back to a relay last night that was the key of the game. It was Nate Sherholtz to Emmanuel Burris, and it was Benjamin Molina putting the tag on. And you cannot work a relay any better than this. To sharpen your vision, check out Dr. Beers at LASIK2020.com. That was some big league ball right there. That's the kind of a play that you would expect to see in, in a World Series with the two best teams in the game. And and I remember my first year broadcasting baseball with Oakland in 1974 when Ray Foster was a catcher for the Oakland Athletics. And in that World Series, the A's beat the Dodgers. And a key play in the, in the clinching game was a relay from Reggie Jackson to Dick Green to third base to get Bill Buckner decided even with nobody out, he was in second. He wanted he wanted more. He wanted to go to third. Well, and Dick Green had his back to Sal Bandel, got the throw, and just in one turn made a perfect strike. And for some reason, Bill Buckner's name always comes up in a World Series, doesn't it? One way or the other. Yeah. <laughs> well, Buckner, they were just out by a run. It was, I think it was the eighth That's inning. It. He would have been in second with nobody out, but he tried for third, and the A's nailed him. And that really was why Oakland won that World Series. Uh, they won it because they did everything well, and, and the Dodgers made little mistakes. Bob Robbie Joshua. Yeah. 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 Bob Joshua with the last one, and I just had neck surgery that year, and there comes Captain Sal Bando just crushed me. <laughs> <laughs> crushed me. All 225 pounds right on my neck. Sal, Sal always said it was only 205 pounds. <laughs> you know, though, you talk about Bill Buckner, it's amazing how this game could be cool. Yes. You know? I mean, the guy was a wonderful player, one of the best teammates I ever had. He was a, uh, a National League batting champion, an all-star, just a, a great player with the Cubs, the Dodgers, the Red Sox. And to be remembered in, in the way that he was remembered, in, in Boston especially, it just it broke, broke my heart. He, he had been a Dodger. Tom Minnesota tells a story. He went to the Cubs. So this might be when he was your teammate, Mike. It was. And uh, first two games of the series, Buckner was eight for eight with three or four home runs, just killing the Dodgers. And Tommy had a little meeting before the game. And he said, uh, let's see how well Billy Buckner can hit while he's lying flat in his back <laughs> in the dirt at home plate. So sure enough, the first time he's up there, whoever the Dodger pitcher was, hit him right in the ribs. You know, he, he, he took the breath out of him and whatnot. He's going to first, trying to... <laughs> and, and he looks over at Tommy and says, I know you ordered this. You are... And, and Tommy says, Billy, what are you saying? I love you like a son. <laughs> now, see, that's the way the Giants and the Dodgers right. played ball in those days. One ball, one strike. The count to Matt Holliday, who has struck out and grounded out. A leadoff walk to Cust. He's at first base. Holliday, a lot of experience against the Giants and against Randy Johnson in his days in the National League with the Colorado Rockies. And off the outside with the, the splitter. The count is 2-1. A lot of speculation around baseball that if the A's don't stay close enough in the American League West that Matt Holliday, who's this is the final year of his contract, could end up being uh, traded for some more young talent. Now this is up the middle. Renteria gets one. Did he get one? He just did get one. He threw a changeup to Emmanuel Burris and they just did get cussed for the one out. Here's our Comcast Sportsnet Central Major League News and Notes. Albert two holes, three for four today in the Cardinals win in Cleveland. He had two home runs, got 22 big flies for the year. Miguel Tejada, the former Oakland shortstop, got his 2,000th career hit. And Houston beat the Diamondbacks in the only National League game on the schedule. He's hitting better than 340 this year for Houston. And Torrey Hunter, three for four. And all of his homers were bases, or all of his hits were bases empty homers. As the Angels defeated San Diego 9 to 1. Go deep with Bay Area Sports News every night on Sportsnet Central only on Comcast Sportsnet Bay Area. Kurt Suzuki hit a home run in the fourth inning that tied this game. He's batting here with one out, runner at first, and Johnson has fallen behind him 2 and 0. Oh. And speaking of the Angels, how about a shock for Howie Kendrick? Four years in the big leagues, and he gets sent to AAA because he's been struggling. So, until you get the free agency and you run out of options, 
that option is always there for a club and he accepted it at least according to what we read they accepted it but uh, you get the big leagues you get comfortable and the shocker when you go back to triple-a they had expected that by now he would have blossomed they, yeah. they keep thinking he's going to be a, a, a steady 300 hitter but it just hasn't actually happened yet hey it's the big leagues man this is uh, you got to perform up here there's no getting yeah. around it and if you don't have the numbers you can't argue that's fine and they just drafted 1500 new players just a few days ago <laughs> that's right <laughs> So plenty of reinforcements <laughs> coming to take your job. Yeah, yeah your locker was nice and <laughs> empty long. But John, you were, you were talking about Matt Holiday. It was very unfortunate. The A's took their first road trip into New York in April. Season just started. Of course, the New York press immediately went to Matt Holiday. What do you think about coming to New York? And it's it's so unfortunate because he wants to play baseball and see what happens at the end of the season. And so as the season progresses, it's going to get even more and more about that. Yeah. In the shallow right, and uh, there is Randy Wynn. And uh, Johnson, who fell behind Suzuki, 3 0, comes back to get him on a fly ball to right. Holiday holding it first, two down, and here comes Bobby Crosby. Randy Johnson issued a leadoff walk in the inning, but Holiday hit into a force play. Now a two down. Johnson will go back to work here. We're in the sixth and a 2 2 tie. 82 pitches thrown by a 45 year old Randy Johnson. Now this 2 2 score. The Giants got up a few runs the 91 is 300th game, but this has been sort of the average score for him. And the ball is out. He's out at first. He picked it off. And Holiday explodes at DJ Rayburn. Holiday was going the wrong way, and Johnson threw over there. And Rayburn said he did not get back. And Bob Guerin, the Oakland manager, out to get in the face of Rayburn. Top of the order coming up for the Giants. Two to two. He didn't think so. But he was running, obviously, as he took off, and he thought he got back with the left hand. Probably saying he never was tagged by Thadaball, and probably wasn't. Oh, no, was he, he got him. him. It's, oh, he got him by a lot. <laughs> well, that's what D.J. Rayburn said. <laughs> you know, I, I think that may be the first pickoff move for Randy Johnson in like 11 years. I believe it, because it's not a very good move. Well, I mean, his whole thing is just, you know, make sure he stopped and just vary the different... Yeah times with which I come home slide step high kick whatnot and I think he was as surprised as uh, <laughs> as holiday was Aaron Rowan and the count to Aaron Giants lead off man is 2 and 0 he is 0 for 2 against young Josh Outman he has struck out and grounded out Renteria and win will follow hitting 307 for the year 2 to 2 the score in the last of the sixth change up got the high strike right there the 2 0 pitch right there Starting to throw more changeups and fastball counts as time through the lineup. 
74th pitch of the night for Josh Outman, who is 4 and 0 for the Athletics this year. Curveball. And hugging the line there was Hanahan, and that was perfect. He throws him out. There is one away. Now the Chevron out of town scoreboard. Twins beat the Cubs in Wrigley for the second day in a row. The Marlins over the Blue Jays for the second day in a row up in Canada. The Mets over the Yankees to get even in that series at Yankee Stadium. The Cardinals beat Cleveland. Two homers for Albert Pujols. The White Sox over the Brewers at Miller Park. The Rays over the Nationals in St. Pete. The Orioles beat the Atlanta Braves at Camden Yards as Edgar Renteria takes ball one from Outman. Some other scores. The Pirates over the Tigers. Kansas City beat Cincinnati. And in progress, the Rockies lead the Mariners. Rockies looking for their 10th win in a row. Easy play here for Kennedy. And Renteria is out number two. Dodgers at a rain delay in Texas, but they're leading now. Three to one in the last of the seventh in Arlington. And the Angels back at three home runs by Torrey Hunter. Clobbered the Padres. And the only National League game, Houston beat Arizona six to four in the desert. I'm John Miller along with Mike Kruko and A's broadcaster Ray Fossey coming to you on NBC Bay Area and the Giants Television Network. Giants won last night 3 0. Tonight it's a 2 2 tie. As Randy Wynn, who struck out twice, bounces one right to short. And Cabrera saw a little bit wide, but hauled in by Crosby. And that was a seven pitch inning for Outman. He's retired 14 in a row. Giants dugout. They always say catchers make excellent Major League Baseball managers, and we're seeing it tonight. For Bruce Bochy with the Giants and Bob Guerin, the Athletics manager, four seasons primarily as a backup catcher with the New York Yankees. And Ray, he said, what 1990 was his big year. He started a lot of games and hit eight home runs. So who is it, Bochy or Guerin? What do you take? Who do you like? <laughs> I always like Bochy. I mean, nothing against the skip, Bob Guerin, but uh, Bochy was always good. And he's been a very good manager as well. But Bob Guerin in his third season. And there's something to be said about catchers. There's a lot of catchers around baseball who are former catchers or managers. Yeah, some think that catchers make good broadcasters. Yeah. Others think former pitchers make good broadcasters. <laughs> <laughs> and former announcers make good broadcasters. <laughs> what have you heard? <laughs> Broken back. Oh. And the throw is offline by Renteria, but the tag by Sandoval. And Crosby is out. Crosby almost pulled it off. I mean, they always say if the throw goes high, you just have to catch the ball and drop the ball in the middle of the, of the base pass. The guy will run right into it and get himself out. But he tried the last second. I don't know how he reacts this quick. And he tries to dive underneath it. And Sandoval just does put the, tech, the tag on it. And we're going to make that our Lexus pursuing 
a perfection play of the game. Just does yeah. get him on the top of the back. So one down. Here's Rajay Davis. He bunts at it and fouls it back to the screen. Well, his ball actually got him on the top of the head, according to DJ Rayburn. First base umpire, and right there actually got him in the back. But Robbie Alomar was the best I ever saw avoiding a tag on a high throw. He would immediately go into a slide. Usually just a, a feet first slide, hook slide in the first base. And really, that's the only time you should slide in the first base when you're trying to avoid a tag. Just diving head first, try to get there quicker. You're slowing yourself down when you do it. Both bullpens are busy now as Johnson misses way off the outside with that uh, splitter in the count one ball one strike to Rajay Davis. There is Sergio Romo the right hander up in the Giants bullpen. What a shot in the arm he has been since he's come off the disabled really has added to that Giants bullpen. Have you had a chance to watch Romo throw it on him? Have not. No. You're going to enjoy this yeah. kid. Lots of movement lots of strikes. Dave Rigetti out to the mound there's Michael Wirtz. Former Cub in the National League, now in the Oakland bullpen, warming up in the visiting bullpen. And Josh Alvin is pitching very well, and his pitch count is outstanding. However, being a National League park, he is due up fourth in this inning, and now third, depending on what happens. So uh, there's always that possibility of a pinch hitter. Yeah. The pitcher leaves early. Well, they'll have that option yeah. should somebody get aboard here. One and two now to Rajay Davis after the visit from. Giants pitching coach Dave Rigetti. Johnson drops one in at the knees and the count one ball and two strikes. That is caught by the diving Burris. Out number two. Uh, the difficulty of this play is a high back end. And for anybody who's going to the right, for a right handed player, when you commit yourself to a jump, and he even goes completely prone and parallel to the ground here, the high back ender is one that is. Is the diff most difficult one to get, and Burris snags this thing like he does it every day. See, guys don't practice that no. play. No. Total ad lib, but fun to watch. Well, that's why the old great plays just happen. Spectacular plays. It's the routine you want to make, and that was a spectacular play. There's ball one to Jack Hanahan. Well, we we've seen tonight on the the video board from some of the highlights from 1989 uh, an ad lib that. Will live forever in Giants history. Kevin Mitchell in his MVP <laughs> year in St. Louis, catching one barehanded. This is Sandoval, and Hanahan retired for the first time. He had a triple and a single earlier. Beautiful play by Burris in the middle of it. Now Molina coming up in a tie game. Monday, June the 22nd, that night, 10,000 fans get a Mark McGuire 1989 replica jersey. Tuesday night will be the reunion of the 1989 championship A's, including Tony Phillips, Abe Stewart, 20 game winner, of course, Dave Henderson, and more. And the series wraps up Wednesday, the 24th, game time each night, 7.05. For tickets, visit OaklandAthletics.com. One dollar hot dogs in the Wednesday game. That's right. Well, I'm bringing 10 bucks in. Two dollar tickets, one dollar <laughs> hot dogs. I'm going to stock up for several days. 
I think he should. <laughs> It'll be a big what? night. All right, so the Giants and the A's will be meeting across the bay starting a week from Monday. And here come the Giants into the seventh. Benji Molina takes a curveball from Outman for a call strike. Now, Benji hit a two run first inning homer against Outman, and it was a good thing for the Giants that he did because Outman then soon thereafter found himself. They've had only one hit since the first inning, and they have not had any base runners at all since the second inning. He has retired 14 in a row. So, Outman has been sensational. That was just pitch number 80, John, and he's out. He would have been out had somebody gotten on base. He would not be pitching this inning, but at least he gets the seventh and will be pinched hit for in the eighth. So maybe Burr should let that ball go through for a hit instead of making <laughs> that diving catch. That's right. Get this <laughs> guy out of the game. <laughs> so Josh Outman last night, Vin Mazzaro. He ended up going six innings and uh, allowed three runs. And the big at bat against him was a base hit by Tim Lincecum, no less. And the curve is too high. So now, three balls and a strike to Benji Molina with Pablo Sandoval on deck and then Juan Uribe do up third. Well, he might be sitting change up. Alvin might throw it to him. It's a 3 1 count. Hitters count. And a fastball is fouled back and out of play. This was the home run back in the first. Likes to get extended, and yeah. this one just sort of hangs out there a little bit middle high, knee high. And you feed this guy something down around the knees. I mean, this guy's this is the only guy in the history of baseball. You know, everybody is like pitch him high and tight, low and away. You pitch this guy up and away, down and in. Only guy in Major League history. Three and two. He whacks that one down the left field line. Holiday will have to play it as it comes off, and now he'll have to chase it, which gives Benji the little opening he needs to turn that into a double. Three two. He got to bite off a little strike zone. He gets this ball up. And Molina just top hand hooks it. And even when it goes off the crack of the bat with his speed, you're not thinking it's going to be a double for a sure thing. And here's where the Giants catch a break. So an extra 90 feet. And uh, right now, Bruce Bochy is going to play a card. He's going to pinch run. Fred Lewis is going to come in. And Benji Molina's night is done. And that same pitch is wanting through to Martin Burr, Josh Altman in Texas. First game on the doubleheader a couple of weeks ago that with a three to two lead, threw him a breaking ball, did not get it far enough inside, hit a home run to tie the game, and that's the same thing. Trying to throw it for a strike instead of maybe trying to get a swing for a strike, and he left it too much in the middle of the plate. Kurt Young, the pitching coach, visiting with Altman on the hill, and now the second baseman. Adam Kennedy also over as you see Benji Molina back in the dugout. Bruce Bochy has indeed made a move here with that runner at second being the possible go ahead run. And you've got the leading hitter of the Giants right now, the young Pablo Sandoval, the 23 year old. Now he is 0 for 2 so far against Outman. He is grounded to third and flied out to center. He chases that high fastball and lofts it foul out of play off to the right. And this is where the Sandoval has not yet blossomed as a, a clutch hitter with runners in scoring position and Mike it partly because he's he's not patient and he he swings at bad balls. You know this situation here especially with an open base Albert's pitching for a strikeout and he's thinking if I throw anything in the strike zone here that's a mistake. If he walks him here it's not the end of the world. And that is a foul and out of play. So the count is quickly 0 and 2. Good pitch to hit right there. Front of the rule of thumb also the runner at second, a right handed batter. You kind of pitch him in so he tries to pull the ball and keep it on the left side to keep the runner at second. Ideally, is that, that ball wants to hit the ball to the right side if he gets a pitch outside to do it. The problem from the A standpoint, the way Hanahan is guarding the line, big gap is between third and short. So if the ball misses inside, he could hook it past him in left field. There's the gap with Cabrera trying to hold the runner close, and so is Kennedy. Now he bluffs Lewis back towards second. Second baseman Kennedy shaded in that direction. Trying to keep him close. Nobody out. Lewis represents the possible go ahead run here in the seventh. And the fastball blooped into right. A long run and look out! It drops! The first baseman, Crosby. 
and the right fielder cussed. And finally, they all came together and nobody caught the ball. Yeah, we've been talking about what the wind has done to the pop-ups and fly balls all night long. When you get one hit out there in no man's land and all of a sudden you're charging hard, running hard, and everybody's got to converge from a long distance. And now at the end you start to deal with the personality that the wind can put on a pop-up and a fly. It's not an easy play. And I think the case here of the A's infielders missed. Maybe misjudged the speed of Jack because he got to the ball. It was his ball all the way. But Crosby and Kennedy both going out and the collision occurred. And that's too bad for Josh Alvin. He made the pitch to keep the runner at second, but could not get the out. And that's first and third. And that is one of the peculiarities of this ballpark that because of that huge gap in right center, the right fielder will play much further off the line, maybe a little bit deeper than in other ballparks. And, and, and maybe Kennedy and mm -hmm. Crosby cognizant of that thought, well, we're going to have to get this one. Pitching change, first and third, nobody out. Of the Golden Gate Bridge at night. And meanwhile, back here in the city, there is Nomar, who has come in as part of a double switch, engineered by manager Bob Garen. So he's at first replacing Crosby. Wirtz is the new pitcher replacing Outman. And Wirtz inherits a tight spot. Runners at first and third, nobody out. Juan Uribe, the hitter. The middle infielders are sort of uh, halfway. That ball is blooped. That's going to fall. Base hit. Lewis wasn't sure, but he scores anyway. Stopping at second is Sandoval. And after the leadoff double by Molina, the Giants have had a couple of bloops that have fallen in, and they lead 3-2. to well, Michael Wirtz has a great slider. Looks like a split-finger fastball. First pitch to Uribe, and it was a good one to slide but off the end of the bat. Plays perfectly in right field. It's amazing the action of that slaughter. I mean, it really does look like yeah. a split. So right now, A's got to be feeling like they're getting beat by a wet noodle. And <laughs> this is what Bruce Bochy calls the, the ground attack. I mean, it doesn't necessarily have to be on the ground. It's just not real loud. Uh, Torres bunts it, but foul. That's a force out at third base with Sandoval, the runner, going from second to third. So it's got to be a good bunt. To uh, move those runners over. Torres, one of the things that Josh liked about him when he made the ball club in the spring was that he was an excellent bunter, especially bunting for base hits. This is a different kind of a bunt here. Nobody out. Runners at first and second. Hanahan, shallow at third, but also trying to lay back to accept the throw. If he gets his bunt down, it's going to be a tough play because of his speed. But that is going to work. And just got him at first. Suzuki, nice play. So the sacrifice has worked. Sandoval to third. Uribe over to second. Well, it was this.
Suzuki's play all the way out in front, and of course he turned perfectly to throw out the speedster. If it would have been Wirtz, he probably would have been a base hit. But Suzuki taking charge, coming out very quickly, and that's with a bad left knee also. So he's moving quite well, and at least gets the one out. That's one of the toughest plays in baseball, yeah. especially with the speed of the hitter. Like you said, it's it's got to be hurried and. So now a big moment. The Giants have a one run lead. They've got a chance to lengthen that lead. The infield has come in for the athletics with one out. Burris the hitter. That's into the right center field area and cussed to his knees to make the catch. But here comes Sandoval with run number four. Sacrifice fly for Burris and in probably any other ballpark in the land, he would have had himself an extra base hit on that one. Well, you're right. They right fielders in this ballpark are cheat away at the line to protect the gap at Triples Alley. And because of that pre pitch positioning, that is what denied extra bags for Burris. A nice play for him. Cust. Pablo Sandoval going back to the bag. An easy score once Cust went down to the ground. So a nice situation like that there for Emmanuel Burris. And another pitching change for the Athletics. Bob Guerin takes the ball from Wirtz. And the left-hander Breslow is coming in. Runner at second. The game was tied at two until Benji Molina led off this inning with a double and Sandoval hit a bloop. Big play that nobody could catch for the Athletics in shallow right. It fell for a single. And then after the pitching change, Uribe singled home the go ahead run. Torres got a butt down and then Burris hit a sacrifice fly. Now Craig Breslow, who started the year with the Minnesota Twins, was picked up on a waiver claim by the Athletics on May 20th. And although he was getting clobbered with the Twins, he'd been lights out with the Athletics. And there's ball one in the dirt to pinch hitter Nate Sherholtz. Sherholtz was entered in as the pinch hitter for Randy Johnson, at which point manager Bob Guerin made the change to his left-hander, the only left-hander in the Oakland bullpen. He had a 6.28 ERA for the Twins. He was walking people, getting roughed up. With Oakland, a 1.93 ERA. And that high slider misses to Sherholtz, who's been the Giants pinch hitter deluxe. He's 7 for 21 as a pinch hitter, a 333 batting average. He's got a runner at second. Juan Uribe with two down here in the seventh. The Giants bullpen with Sergio Romo getting ready for the eighth inning. Ball three. The right handed hitting, Aaron Rowan is on deck. And this is one of the problems he had with the Twins. He was walking. He walked 11 in 14 in the third innings. With Oakland, he's walked one. That was the situation. The Twins tried to sneak him through waivers, but the A's were sharp and claimed him, and he's been great for the A's in the bullpen. And a strike on the outside, three and one. The amazing thing when Michael Wirtz came in the game in the matter of four pitches and three batters, the Giants picked up a couple of runs. That's how quickly they jumped on. First offerings for Michael Wirtz. 
And uh, he swung at ball four there and chopped it foul. Sherholtz doesn't like to take a walk. Sherholtz is up there to swing. And uh, Giants like to see him have a little more patience and look for pitches. He's got power and he's got speed. But he swings a lot of bad balls. Three and two. And Breslau, a good cutter. He's thrown a couple to Sherholtz and basically throws the cut fastball and a fastball. He does have a good curveball. Doesn't use it that much out of the bullpen. That is through. Base hit. Cussed up of the ball. Uribe will score as Cuss drops the ball. Five to two Giants. An RBI single by Sherholtz. Well, you talk about being able to carve a ditch out of this ball game or this as a career for Sherholtz. I mean, having the ability to do what he does, which is the hardest thing to do in this game, pinch hit, and he gets quality at bats where he'll seemingly square it up just about every time get good contact on a ball and that's what you have to do you've got to be a good contact hitter put it in play put it in play and drive it hard and every once in a while a full hopper will find a hole so now Aaron Rowan and get back to the bag is sure holds now Nomar is the first baseman after the the double switch with with words coming in and I'm wondering if they'd like to have Seen Crosby go after that same ground ball. The former shortstop who was playing first base. Steal situation here. So what, the strike. what you're saying, John, you have two former shortstops at first base. Crosby yeah. Park right with the Red Sox and Crosby. His career. But Nomar at this stage, after all of the injuries and, uh, and, uh, and in many cases debilitating injuries, does not move the way he used to move in his great days with the Red Sox. And there's that cutter you're talking about, Ray. Strike two. That is nasty. But right there on the hands, too. Yeah, to Sherholtz, it, it seemed almost like Breslow was trying to avoid a walk. He, he kind of hung the cut fastball, but this much better to Aaron Rowan, getting it inside where he wanted to, the location. Sherholtz, like he just did not have the same effort with a 3 2 pitch. There goes Sherholtz. And Nomar sort of second. He's safe! But throw just enough offline, and Sherholtz beat the tag by the shortstop Cabrera. If a runner at first can get a big enough lead, and the first move he takes off, it takes two perfect throws, and the A's did not make the two perfect throws. One, but because of the jump of Sherholtz, he was able to beat the throw by Garcia Park. And that's a planned play. Yep. You get the extended lead, and you're going first movement. Now runner at second. And that's it for Rowan, the cutter on the hands for the strikeout. But the Giants get three. On to the eighth inning. They lead back to the big unit, five to two.
dollar burger. More than just a piece of meat. Five runs, seven hits, one error for the Giants. Two runs, four hits for Oakland. Jack Hanna had a big night against the big unit. That's a night to remember for Hanahan, a left-handed hitter. Two for three, including a triple and a run scored. Kurt Suzuki hit a home run against Johnson, who himself went seven innings, two runs, four hits allowed, one walk, three strikeouts. Benji Molina, two-run homer for the Giants against Josh Outman, who was outstanding and really a hard luck story for the game tonight. Giants with three in the seventh. Two of them charged to Outman. And uh, both of them scoring after he had departed the game. Here is Nomar against the new Giants pitcher, Romo. And there's that sweeping slider off the outside for ball one. The Giants with a couple of other changes we'll tell you about. As Romo had a very poor game, his very first game back from his rehab assignment. And he has been lights out ever since. That fastball is off the outside, and it is 2-0. Oh. Well, that is the strength of Romo, his ability to control his pitches. He's got lots of movement on the fastball. He can go both sides of the plate within an array of different type of breaking balls he can give you. Eli Whiteside in to assume the job of catching. This is Sandoval calling for it in foul ground, and Nomar is out number one. Also Aurelia in at third base for the Giants. So Uribe is out. Molina had been lifted for a pinch runner after his double to lead off the seventh. Jeremy Affelt starts to throw now in the Giants bullpen. Aurelia, by the way, will hit in the fourth spot in the order where Molina had been. And... Uh, Whiteside will hit in the sixth spot where Uribe had been. So Romo is in the ninth spot. Right where the pitcher is supposed to be. Right where the pitcher is supposed to be. When Sergio Romo came off of the disabled list, it really solidified things for the Giants down the bullpen. This is right over the middle. And there's Renteria. The throw, not much on it. But he got him. The pick by Sandoval. And... Uh, Renteria, with considerable help by Sandoval, throws out his countrymen. Both Cabrera and Renteria come from Colombia in South America. And here's a look. Well, how do you explain that he didn't get the short hop a few innings ago? And this one, <laughs> extremely difficult. Going out, extends a, a nice stretch. This is a Willie McCovey-like stretch here. And uh, swiping that thing, that's a good pick. Now, maybe this was a legitimate pick. The other one should have caught in the air. Maybe that was the difference. <laughs> Maybe that was it. That the other one we're talking about was back in the second inning of the game. On a ball hit by Kurt Suzuki. A low throw by Burris, and he could not come up with it. Adam Kennedy, who knocked in a run in the third with a single. A clutch two-out hit. He's one for three in the game. Two down and nobody on. And a foul out of play off to the left. I remember... Adam Kennedy helping the Angels win that World Series in 2002 against the Giants, but also helping them get to the World Series. He had one game against the Minnesota Twins in the late championship series that year. He had three homers in the same game. Adam Kennedy had his, uh, his Babe Ruth game. Or as we like to say here in San Francisco, his Willie McCovey game. Or maybe you might say his Reggie Jackson game. One ball and two strikes. By the way, that, that steal we saw by... I didn't have time to, to mention it when Sherholtz stole on when he got picked off that used to be especially back in 1974 of Hurricane Herb Washington with the <laughs> athletics right. and that is strike three and another great inning from Sergio Romo starting to become a habit by the two Giants
defensive plays in baseball history. Back in 1989, hello to Kevin Mitchell. Who needs the baseball glove? The barehanded catch at Bush Stadium in St. Louis hit off the bat of Ozzie Smith. Amazing play for Kevin Mitchell. He was the MVP of that 1989 season in the National League. And we saw him before the game. He is here tonight at the game. And, and Mike, I think he can still play. In fact, I think he was playing in an adult baseball league down in San Diego. Kevin Mitchell now in his uh, mid-40s. Back up to you. He could still hit, Raj. He could still hit. New pitcher for Oakland, Russ Springer. A veteran right-hander. Many years in the National League. And a foul right back to the screen on the fastball. From Edgar Renteria, who has singled, fouled to the catcher, and grounded out to second. And well, Springer, his numbers for the athletics. 26th appearance, and he and Michael Wurst, the month of April, were used, it seemed like, every day. And unfortunately for Russ, he's had a problem getting the ball down since that first month. He's elevated pitches as the first one to Renteria was. Fortunately for Springer, it was fouled back. Yeah, it's a good cutter. Of course, the veteran leadership out of the bullpen, the A's were hoping to get when he... Signed as a free agent after two great years with the Cardinals the last two years. A ball and a strike to Renteria. Giants have seven hits in the game. Renteria has one of them and scored a run. Is that a hanging breaking ball? And there is Cust into a slide as he makes the catch. Well, tune in to Bay Area's number one rated 11 p.m. newscast right here on NBC Bay Area tonight. At 11, and you can wake up with traffic and weather on NBC Bay Area weekday morning starting at 4.30 a.m. I'm going to go to bed right after this game so I can get up in time for that on Monday morning. <laughs> <laughs> I, don't, I hope it's going to be enough. That's a little rough. Brian Wilson, the Giants closer up in the bullpen. Andy Wynn, who I'm sure is not sad to see Josh Outman out of the game. Outman, the young Oakland left-hander. Struck him out twice and got him to hit a ground ball to short the other time. Now Randy batting left-handed from which side he's hitting 324 for the year. And there's a sharp breaking ball in the dirt from Springer. One ball, one strike. Oakland will have its big hitters up in the ninth inning against Wilson, Cust, Holiday, and Suzuki. The numbers three, four, and five hitters in the order. Tonight a night that began in a festive atmosphere. The members of the Giants 1989 National League pennant winning team were honored before the game. A lot of memories. Mike Kruko was among those who received a, a huge ovation for the crowd here tonight. And uh, that ball club remembered fondly and also was a guy that was here that, that I see almost every Sunday traveling in the country doing the, the national Sunday night telecast. Candy Maldonado uh, was here, part of that ball club. Candy broadcasts those national Sunday night games. That's a base hit for win. Uh, on this, the Spanish network, the ESPN Deportes. Candy looks in great shape. Talking about how this is like else look, but Candy, I told him, if you'd have been in this kind of shape if we were playing, we'd have won the dead gum World Series. <laughs> I mean, he was styling walking out. I mean, that's that's the way he played, right? Yeah, he's a good player. Yeah. I really thought 1987, you know, he had he was injured that year, lost about three weeks to a month. He really could have been the MVP. Yeah. Just a, a really good, solid, heady player, smart. Well, here's Richard really up for the first time in the fourth spot in the order. Entered the game in the first half of this inning, in the spot where Molina had been. Benji, big night tonight, a two-run homer in the first inning, and then a double that started that three-run seventh inning rally. Ball knocked down by Suzuki, holding Randy Wynn at first base. But Kenny Maldonado is, by all accounts, I don't get a chance to, to, to hear his broadcast, but in the Spanish language, apparently he's is outstanding on those telecasts. He's also become an entrepreneur. He owns a, a team in the Puerto Rican Winter League. I was to trying to convince him that he should bring us down there in the winter, especially maybe January. That uh, we broadcast the games down there for his team just for expenses. Maybe it's some, you know, beachside resort or whatever. He said he'd think about it. I'll put a word for you too, Ray. I was thinking me and Mike, but. Uh, I'm in. <laughs> We're there. I'll get the golf times. Ray, you bring the wine. <laughs> That's right. One ball and no strikes to count, and Aurelia takes ball two. Aurelia hitting 208 for the year. He's only had 72 at bats. One homer, 12 RBIs. Facing Springer with one out. Randy Wynn at first. Last of the eighth. 
Dodgers won their game at Texas 3 to 1. Colorado won its 10th in a row, beating Seattle at Coors Field. And a fastball for a strike to the outside. Padres lost in uh, Anaheim to the Angels. And in the American League West, the Texas Rangers are atop the division. Now by three and a half over the Angels. Still five and a half over the Seattle. And all those American League West teams were shouting, Ooh, go L.A. tonight for the Dodgers to, to beat the top team. And they did. You don't see Springer make that many mistakes like that. Uh, that was a that was a T ball location fastball. And a hitter gets a pitch like that. The first thing he says to himself is, "I want that one again." Well, that's a problem. He's left too many pitches up. And first month of the season, everything was down. Cutter, the fastball down where it should be. I was reading those boxers. I thought he was an everyday player. Yeah. Ooh, there's that sharp slider and Aurelia tried to check. But could not do it. As Bill Welkin, he, he doesn't like those appeal calls. He likes to make all those calls himself on the check swings. And that's something that we're seeing more and more, which to me is very hard to believe that an umpire can watch the flight of the baseball and call balls and strikes, yet be able to watch the hitter and determine if it's a check swing or not. But when you guys played, he made the call. Right? The, no the catcher didn't point to the first base umpire, the third base umpire said, Oh, I'd rather ask him. Mm. Uh, yeah. yeah, that was it, right? Whatever he decided, that yeah. was it. Here's Pablo Sandoval. I never understood if the there's a check swing, and he didn't call it a swing. That the catcher can appeal it, mm -hmm. but if he rules it a swing, how come the hitter can't appeal it? That's off the mound. It turns into like a high pop up behind second, where Cabrera takes it. Man, that ball was smoked. And it hit the mound and took a gigantic leap in the air. The first hit of the night, or the, uh, yeah, the second hit of the night for Sandoval. I haven't seen that before. Now, did it hit the ground before it hit the pitching rubber? Because it did. But if the ball hits the rubber and then stays in the air, it's an out. Well, it hit, hit him on the foot. Just on the side of the foot. I don't think it caused him any pain, but that sure looked funky going up there. And, and I, yeah, that's the first thing I was wondering if it did indeed hit the. I thought it hit his foot though. Well, it looked from there like it hit it. And it did hit yeah, the ground even before right. that. Kurt Young out to uh, see if everything's okay with Springer. Besides the fact that he's given up two hits in the inning. But, I mean, that's a break for the A's because if that ball goes through, that's a first, third situation. Yeah. And here now is Matt Whiteside, the Giants' backup catcher. His first trip to the plate in this game. Whiteside is hitting 278 for the Giants in 18 at bats, two runs batted in. And, and Eli Baldwin. Whiteside had some really good at bats on the road trip. I mean, he had, uh, he likes to be, he's, he's more of a pull hitter. Everything we saw come off his bat was going to left field, but definitely had good ABs, good balanced at bats. And it all starts with balance. There's a little cutting action on that fastball running away from Whiteside. One ball, one strike. If you haven't seen Russ Springer's breaking balls and it's your first at bat against him, it's a rough at bat. Springer has always had tremendous slider curveball combination. Right off the mask of Kurt Suzuki. What's that feel like, Ray, when that happens? Oh. Worst I had was in 74 whenever. I happened to break up a fight between a couple of teammates and ended up having a surgery on my neck and then to come back after that and take one straight off the mask. Yeah. Playing in Milwaukee when it happened and everybody in the dugout, I looked over, they're all looking at me. <laughs> like they thought you were, they wondered if yeah, you were really exactly. hurt. But the problem is the neck because okay. the jar is once it hits the mask, your neck jars back and that's why you have to have a strong neck. So if you're almost like it. a little whiplash exactly. uh, action there. There's a pop up. And the second baseman, Kennedy. And that is the inning. Two men stranded for the Giants. It's a safe situation for Brian Wilson. Cust, Holiday, Suzuki coming up for Oakland.
ticket will get you a seat in the special section and a limited edition Will Clark jersey t-shirt. Proceeds from each ticket sold, but if it's Autism Speaks and Athletes Against Autism, call 415-972-2298 and check it out. Brian Wilson on for the ninth inning, trying to save this one for Randy Johnson. He was uh, very proud to have gotten the save the night that Randy Johnson won his 300th career game. That was in Washington on June the 4th. And uh, that is a ball down. And, and in that game, it was a four-out save. He inherited a very tight spot in the eighth inning of that game. Got out of a bases loaded jam by striking out Adam Dunn, no less. And then he struck out the side in the ninth inning. All of his outs that night were on strikeouts. And Jack Cusk fouls one away. Two balls and a strike. That was power versus power right there. Jack Cuss sitting at a 2-0 count. You know what he's looking for. and Getting the fastball and putting a lick on it. The last outing that Brian Wilson had was the best, the cleanest save that he's had all year long. It was a 3-up, three 3-down three strike him out and a 1-2-3 ninth inning. And he didn't have one three-ball count, and that's significant. Giants fans are so used to seeing Brian Wilson come in, it's almost like an automatic 3-2 count. I mean, if you like drama, he's been the guy to go to. But there's the outing he had against the D-backs on Wednesday. 12 pitches, three strikeouts. Can't get any cleaner than that. Best of the year. And that is in there, strike two. At uh, 95 miles an hour. And there's your 3-2 count. Yeah. It had been such a regular thing, that 3-2 count. I kept thinking, why don't I just start at 3-2? and It would be a lot quicker. Same pitches. 3-2 <laughs> and two the count. Strike three call to the outside corner. But that's what he does. He has an uncanny knack for coming up and making the pitch. He'll make it as dramatic and as interesting as you would want it or not want it. But he always seems to be able to come up and make that pitch. And that's a case of a catcher holding the target in the middle of the plate, three run lead, and take the movement wherever it might be, and it happened to be to the corner. So, did you like the way the white side received that ball? As a, as a former right. catcher? Absolutely. If you catch it properly, that means you keep it in the strike zone. Too many guys snatch it out of the strike zone, and sometimes they get the call, others they don't. That's the slider from Wilson, and a high fly ball foul by Matt Holliday down the right field line, back into the crowd. 37,874. The paid attendance for the Giants and the A's tonight here. At 24, Willie Mays Plaza in San Francisco. 105 tomorrow. Tickets available at sfgiants.com. A little bit low to Holiday, who has struck out, grounded a third, and hit into a force play. He is 0 for 3. 5 to 2, the Giants ahead here in the ninth. A three run, seventh inning rally, the difference in the game. And that fastball at 96, down and in. And the count is two and one. Randy Johnson went seven. Two runs, four hits allowed for the big unit. 91 pitches thrown. Strong night for him. Hanahan is the guy who had the big night against him. A triple and a single, a run scored. And Suzuki had a home run. That is it very slowly. Aurelia barehanded. Not in time. And a nice save there by Sandoval. That was Andre's big cat Galarraga like the way he <laughs> caught that one. That slider two and one, and Matt Holliday's just rolled over on it. He does run well. So 28 bases last year for the Rockies. Out of the box very quickly. Excellent play by Aurelia. <laughs> just fall down and catch it. <laughs> just fall down and catch it, baby. <laughs> Style points. <laughs> Big cat, whatever. Just catch it. Actually, a ball he should have just come off the bag. Caught it, give it back to the pitcher, and Keep the runner first. Yep, that was a hit all the way for Holiday. And there's a called strike to Kurt Suzuki. He had been safe on an error by Burris. He's homered to left center and flied out to right. Hitting 277 for the year. It's interesting, he's only got the three homers Ray had pointed out. All of them against lefties, two of them against great left handers. And that ball, the slider in the dirt, and got away from white side. And over to second goes Holiday. We've seen this before with Whiteside, and, and you cannot be a shortstop with catching gear on. You've got to have proper hand position when you're 
getting into a block position. If you reach out and you try and backhand a one hop, the ball's going to hit your glove and it's going to carry him away. Yeah, no body movement whatsoever, and ball in the dirt, and you're right. All he has to do is just go to his knees and use his body to block the ball instead of trying to catch it like an infield. Runner in second, one out. And a fastball foul tipped into the glove of Whiteside. 98 miles an hour, the little hop to it. Wilson, in his 29th game of the year, he has 16 saves. Here is Randy Wynn. And that is out number two. Suzuki got a pretty quick back. That is a short stroke. That's a stroke built for average. I want to know. He's got the three homers against left-handers. We're talking about Suzuki. So he doesn't hit many against lefties or righties. But when he hits one against a lefty, it's either Randy Johnson, which was tonight, or CC Sabathia. What about all the other left-handers that aren't that great? And Joe Saunders not that bad either. Well, Saunders, what, he won 16, 17 for the Angels last year. How about some lefty who's, you know, got an ERA around 480? How come he can't hit one deep against him? He'll get there eventually. Just his second full year of Major League Baseball. Came up in... August of 07. Jason Giambi, the pinch hitter. And the slider is hit high in the air to center. And there is Rowan. And the Giants have made it two in a row over the Athletics to complete their tribute to the 1989 Giants and the 20th anniversary of that pennant winning team.